have you got on top for the TJ? Oh, great segue, Greg. Uh, you would have thought I would have told you who my pick of the yard with. I am definitely with Pierata. He looked fantastic. He's in great order and he has to be the horse to beat in this race on looks alone. Loving Gabby looked in great order as well. I think that she's definitely a horse that uh, has come back better and stronger this preparation. And uh, of the others, I thought uh, Santa and Elaine also looked in great order, but still don't feel like they've got to the bottom of him completely. I uh, have to go with Pierre on top, Greg. He just looks in great order. One seven two thirteen for me. I've got to go with the speed of Nature Strip here. If he does anything near what he did in that challenge stage, by gee, he's going to be he's going to take some running down here. I think Bivouac's his main threat. I think he can bounce back from um, Mooney Valley last time. Parada, no knock whatsoever. Just needs to slot in uh, along with Loving Gabby. Just finding the right back back to drag him into this race. So uh, that's their main objective here. The big big improver is Exceedance on uh, on looks. I think he. He's uh, stood out and just a matter of his mind on things. We'll find out today on his preferred wet track. One, seven, two and 13, Glenn. Yeah, well, Nature Strip, he's touched $4 a couple of times now in the last 10 minutes. He's back to that $4 quote now. Uh, and his favourite over Bivouac, who, who touched 5 is back to 480 into 380 now. Nature Strip, so Nature Strip back into 380. Bivouac's at 480. Pierrata's on the bounce between 6 and 650. He's currently 6. Loving Gabby at 8. Santa ran a lane 850. Exceedance went 12 all the way into 850, back to 9. 50 now. Red Zell's at 13. The rest of them at $31 and longer. Huge betting race, as you could well imagine here. A good battle all day between Nature Strip and Pierrata as the most favoured runner. At this stage, it's held on by Nature Strip. So Nature Strip favourite, Lizzie's pick of the yard there, Pierrata. And Greg, Lizzie's the only one on the commentary team couldn't have done that with a hair. We don't have to worry about it. <sighs> They're over at the gates here. What a race this has been, and we're hailing this as one of the best TJ Smiths ever, but look at the last decade. Apache Cat, Takeover Target, Black Caviar won it twice. Lankan Rupee, who will ever forget Chautauqua's treble. 2015, 16 and 17, three amazing wins. Then it was Trapeze Artist, and last year it was Senna and Elaine, and Sanders back to go, back to back. But overall, the quality is there. And have a look at that horse on screen, Red Zell. This is his home, this is his track. He won the first and second Everests, and he's being trotted around there, Duff, to keep nice and alert and ready to go. Yeah, what a, what a story if he, he got uh, actually won this race. All the races that Chris Wallace won, I don't think he's won a TJ Smith. I don't know whether McDonald's won a, a TJ Smith actually as well. So it'll be, they've won everything else on the calendar. I think they'll get a lot of satisfaction if they can get this favourite over the line here. And uh, there's a good money late, uh, for the NOP for Parata as well, the pick of the yard from Lizzie. So what a contest we have here um, about to unfold. And as you said, the honour roll here, Greg, is just enormous. Can Santa do it two years in a row? Who knows? There are many looking for first. Anthony Friedman, of course, won it with Santa last year. Team Hawks won it three times with Chautauqua. All other trainers looking for their first. Tommy Berry was aboard Chautauqua three times. McAvoy Bowman have won it once each. And, uh, well, Rawilla was going to ride standout. Not there now. He was a two-times winner of the TJ. So many of these looking for their first. And what a race it is. It's... It's the sprinting, the sprinting stars. In the spring now, we see them in the Everest. In the autumn, we see them in the TJ Smith. And they're over behind the star barrier stalls at that 1,200-metre start. And they're about to move up. Any late changes here, Munns, before we go to Darren? Yeah, back to four, Greg. Nature Strip. Bivouac back to five. Pirata into 5.50. Loving Gabby into 7.50. Santa out to nine. Exceedance out to 10. Redzel out to 14. So Pirata, the public favourite here. Uh, Maxie's even got the tie-on in Brisbane. Get set to enjoy this wherever you're watching around the world. This is Royal Ramwick, the Group 1 TJ Smith Stake, sponsored by TAB. The outside, Loving Gabby, the lone filly of the field, looking for a third Group 1 of the season. So Loving Gabby to, to move in for the 2020 TAB TJ Smith Stakes. Red light. Favourite nature strip drawn the fence. And they're all set. 
gates are back now and they're off and racing and Vega Days aggressively ridden out from the wide draw. White Moss jump well, loving Gabby as well from Red Zeller and Nature Strippers there on the inside and he's starting to muster improving. Parada drops into a nice position on the outside of In Her Time followed by Tafane, Santa and Elaine on the fence trekking between them. Bivouac got back to second last and last of all is Exceedance. Nature Strips pretty key now. He's a real control freak and he wants the front. He took it away from Vega Days. Red Zell being pushed along to keep up with them coming to the turn. White Moss in fourth, followed by In Her Time, Loving Gabby. Further back to Parada, Satter at a lane on the fence. Has four behind coming around the turn. to a trekking exceedance. And Bivouac will have to be good to win from there. Into the straight and Nature Strip tries to slip them. He's got Red Zell done, followed then by In Her Time, White Moss. Santa and Elaine's about six or seven off them. Bivouac as well, but he's running on. But it's Nature Strip well clear at the 150 from Red Zell. Parada charging at the end. But Nature Strip, he's a force of nature today. That's his fourth group one. Brilliant. Santa and Elaine grabs second just in front of Red Zell and Parada. Then came Tafane. Bivouac was next. A gap back to Exceedance, followed by In Her Time tracking from White Moss. Well back loving Gabby. And Vega Days was last in in the TJ of 2020. What a sprinter. What a sprinter. He has demolished a world-class field. He has given no other horse in that race a look in. Look at the quality behind him and look at the margin he puts on these horses. This big chestnut, Nature Strip, wins for Chris Waller and James McDonald. It's their first TJ Smith victory. The margin will be two on the line. Santa is poking his nose out to grab second and he will get that. We'll stand by for third. Ron Duffersey, what else can you say about Nature Strip? Oh, well, what's the old saying? No speed, no talent. And speed he has. Speed he has in spades. He just breaks their heart. Uh, you know, he mightn't have that last 200 metre speed, but the damage is done with them having to chase him for so long. Um, they all had to had a go to soften him up. Vega Days went forward. White Moss went forward. He kept in touch there and run his usual brave race, uh, Red Zell and Santa and Elaine. Terrific, considering uh, the circumstances of the wet track here today. But he makes his own luck and boy, oh boy, he, he, he's just a ripper sprinter. When he turns up like that, there's no horse in the world who can beat him. And any of the top sprinters around in the world, they're there, they're out on the track. One Nature Strip, three Santa Ana Lane, four Red Zell, two Parata. That's the numbers across the line. Number 10, Tafane has run fifth. And we're just standing by for the time that they ran. That will be up in a moment. In fact, it is up 111.18 on this rain-affected track. Well, Chris Waller has uh, scored his first victory in the TJ Smith with such a talent. Chris, he just destroys his rivals with speed. He certainly does. Um, yeah, it's an amazing race to watch when you're, when you're training him. Uh, especially on a great field of sprinters, the best sprinters, I would say, around the world. Uh, they're assembled here today at Randwick. And yeah, we're very grateful to be um, still racing safely and um, doing it all responsibly. And, yeah, that's that's just as rewarding in itself. Did you know today that, you know, he was going to produce another A-class performance by his demeanour when he gets here? I just think he's an amazing horse. Um, first up, he's always a little bit soft. Um, and he showed that this prep, but since then he's been, he's been on his A-game and um, James does a great job with him and... What he does to his rivals is he makes it so hard for them to stay with him. Um, and gee, from the sort of the 600 metre mark to the 300 metre mark, you could see they're all just struggling to stay with him. And he can still maintain it for 1,200 metres. So, wow, well, what, a, what a great horse and uh, a lot to look forward to. Would you be tempted to run in the all-aged and stretch him out a bit? I'd be very tempted, but... Um, um, do we need to? I'd say there'll be plenty of people chasing him in the Everest, and that's a big race if we can get through all the coronavirus and everything like that. Just on his uh, his talent and, and going forward, have you got any doubts that he could stretch out over further and be as dominant as that? Um, it's like asking how good are your children, really. <laughs> so I think he's... Um, 
He's very effective for 1,200, and I think more effective for 1,200 than 1,000. So yeah, 1,400 he would be, but ah, the big race is at 1,400, it's sort of a, a gap distance. So I think we'll stick to 1,200 for a while. And look, after today's dominant win, I doubt we'd need to go to the all-age, really. We don't need to be greedy. Well done. On your first TJ Smith, you won a lot of big races. You've got a Doncaster to come, but that's your first TJ. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Chris Waller. And it's the first for J-Mac as well. It is the first for J-Mac, but I, um, I have to ask you this. I mean, he's a horse that he's sort of like you, the love him or you hate him. He's a bit like Marmite, but he's obviously got this amazing ability. But what is it when he switches on, he switches on? How can you explain it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to explain because we, we were so confident going to Melbourne that day and we thought a thousand metres up the straight he would just jump, run and, and win. But as it turned out, he, he backfired on us and he hasn't looked back, looked back since he's been up in Sydney and he's just a gem. You see how quiet he is. He's, I think he just likes a bit of racing. He, once he gets deeper into his prep, he loves stable life with the Waller camp and um, he's just doing a marvellous job. Talk us through it. The gates opened. What were your thoughts initially? Just sit there as quiet as a church mouse, basically. It's... Um, as everyone knows, the first furlong is his key to either winning or not. But he's getting to a stage where even if he, when he is pressured, he's coming back that length until I signal him to go. So he's just getting better and better and um, he's a gem to be a part of. And how was the confidence during the run when you realised that you probably didn't have that amount of pressure you thought you were going to have? Oh, I, I thought, yeah, originally I thought that someone would be out there to pressure me a little bit, but... Um, I could see them coming across and yeah, Nate Strip was just waiting for my yeah, grab up another hold or click him up but um, he went through his gears really well and uh, from about the 800 I felt him he, he was airborne from there he, he was high steaming in and, and from the, about the top of the straight look I knew he's going to be vulnerable late but it's just a matter of getting enough out of him towards the end, but he's he's just going so well. There's a lot of horses that I'm sure you're very fond of through your career, but he's got to be up there just because he's so quirky. Yeah, the love-hate relationship. <laughs> got to love it, but uh, no, nah, he's, he's definitely well up there and it's a privilege to be a part of him. Well done. Thank you. So, Nature Strip wins the TJ time, 111.18, last 636, 26. It was two lengths by a head. Chris Waller wins his 110th career Group 1. James McDonald, his 46th. We'll be back. The next one, the star Doncaster. 20 runners to face the starter when we return to Randwick. Oh.